Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. As you can see, we're playing one of our favorite games, Hide and Go Seek. It's Roberta's chance to hide, and Phoebe and I are trying to find her. As you can see, Roberta has got the help of all her cousins, and that tactical creature is hiding in plain sight. We're hoping you can help us find her. Do you remember what a group of zebras is called? That's right, a dazzle of zebras. So, do you think you can see Roberta? Point to her if you can see her. That animal has bested us. But I tell you what, I've got a trick to get Roberta out of hiding. She will never miss the joke segment. Hey Phoebe, do you know where Roberta is? We're about to do the joke segment and if she's not here, we're just gonna skip over it for this week. Did someone say jokes? Don't start without me. <laughs> Roberta, we found you. That was a trick. Okay, okay, yes, you finally found me. Nicely done, team. That was quite clever. I'm guessing there's no joke happening right now. Can I at least do the introduction? Roberta, with those camouflage techniques, the introduction is all yours. And kids, we've got a surprise for you. We've hidden a number of animals throughout the show. See if you can find them. Hello kids, and welcome to San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. We can't wait to share all our stories and adventures with you. So let's explore the animal world together. As always, buckle up because we're about to bring the zoo to you. Roberta, what inspired you to use all your cousins in the game of hide and seek? Well, Dr. Z, I have to give credit to my black and white stripes. Even though each zebra has its own unique pattern, these stripes help us blend in or camouflage with each other when we need to. As you saw, when we all stand together, it's difficult to pick out any individual. Here at the zoo, my camouflage helps me play games of hide and seek. But out on the African savanna, it's an important strategy to protect us from predators. Well, I think I want to play another game of hide and go seek and see if I can use a different strategy. You know, Phoebe and I don't have stripes. Oh, I like a challenge, Dr. Z. Game on. But you don't need stripes to camouflage. There are lots of ways animals camouflage in nature. I think I'm gonna to have to do some research on this, Roberta. I wonder, what strategies do animals use to camouflage themselves? I mean, I'm more of a colorful kind of person, so I don't really blend in. My camouflage isn't that good. Actually, Dr. Z, color plays a radiant role in the world of camouflage, too. Let's check in with Olivia, who can give us all of the vibrant facts from some aquatic friends who really know how to stand out. If I asked you to think of a green animal, you might think of a chameleon. Or if I asked you to think of a blue animal, you might say a butterfly or a macaw. So many animals around the world have adapted to grow different colored feathers, fur, and scales. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself why these animals have such radiant colors? What about the animals that are covered in all kinds of colors? Like coral reef fish, for example. Hundreds of species flashing yellows, purples, oranges and greens with different patterns of stripes, spots and shapes. Today we're exploring some of the colorful coral reef fish here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we're gonna have a chat to education specialist Luke and see if he can help us get to the bottom of our colorful question. Coral reef fish are so colorful because they live in a colorful environment. And if you live in a colorful place, you've got to figure out how to either stick out when you want to be seen or camouflage when you don't want to be seen. So if you're trying to attract a mate or trying to reproduce, you want to be visible and be seen by the other fish. If you want to camouflage, you want to hide from predators, you can go nestle into the red or blue or green coral and your red or blue or green color will allow you to blend in. This is all starting to make sense now. Their color allows them to camouflage into the colorful coral and their color helps them to find a mate. Hang on, does that mean that fish can see in color? Do they see the coral reef the same way that we do? Fish can see in color. Usually they can see maybe a different range of colors than we can. Some fish can see more colors than we can. 
But in order to be able to see all the different signals they're sending to each other with all the flashy, exciting colors they have, they do have to be able to see in color. Well, there you have it. Turns out these jewels of the sea aren't just beautiful to look at. They're very well adapted to living that colorful, radiant coral reef lifestyle. All right, Roberta. What do you think of my camouflage? Look at that. I am blending in. I've been inspired. Nice try, Dr. Z. Almost. But you're not quite blending into your background with those colors. Remember, colorful animals camouflage best when surrounded by a colorful environment. So like the octopus will change its color to suit its background or, or the fish will blend in with each other. So many vibrant colors, so many different strategies. Well, speaking of the underwater world of color, Olivia has a fantastic idea to bring the ocean and its amazing wildlife right into our homes. Today we're going to make an edible underwater scene. Now this cutting board is going to be the canvas or the background of our underwater scene and we're going to fill it with a bunch of different creatures that we're going to make out of fruit. Now I've made a couple already. Over here we have our kiwi turtle, a strawberry octopus and a fish made out of orange and strawberry. I think we might start with our strawberry octopus. So grab a big strawberry and always ask an adult to help you out if you are using a knife. What you want to do is cut that strawberry in half. And now we're going to create our eight legs. Using the bottom of the strawberry, cut that in half and cut each half in half again. And that will make four legs. And then what we're going to do is cut those four legs in half again, which will make eight. I think we might place our octopus in the top corner of our scene. Now I think our octopus is missing something pair of eyes. Now these are just little edible sugar eyes, but you can use any kind of fruit you like to create the eyes. He looks pretty good. I think we might make a kiwi turtle now. Grab a kiwi fruit and get a little slice from top to bottom to create the body of our turtle. Now we need to create four flippers. Now using a little half cut of a kiwi fruit, cutting in the other direction now, cut that in half. Cut off the skin and cut around the middle. Now we have two little C shapes and we'll be cutting each of those in half to create our flippers. Now our turtle needs a head. So go back to your kiwi fruit and we'll just use a half of a kiwi fruit circle. I'm going to cut around it to make it a little bit smaller and a little bit more rounded to suit a turtle head shape. Add a couple more sugar eyes and find a nice place to put your kiwi turtle. Okay, now it's time to make our fish. You wanna grab an orange and cut that orange right down the middle in half. Get that middle slice. Now we want to create some lips for our fish. And I think some lips might look good made out of strawberry. Cut the end of your strawberry off like so and split that in half to make two separate little lips and place them at the front of your fish. Now it's time to make the tail and I'm going to use a lemon. We just want a little slither to make our tail. I cut that in half and then in half again, and place those on the end as the tail. One more sugar eye. Now what we might do to really highlight our underwater scene is use blueberries as bubbles. So add a few blueberries above your fish, maybe even the turtle, and you can fill out your scene with as many little characters as you like. Hey, Dr. Z. Orange, you glad Olivia showed us how to make those colorful treats? You know, Roberta, I always appreciated that you stick food into every episode. Delicious. You know, you might be an expert on all things camouflage, but Roberta, don't forget, I am an expert on all things excrement. Oh, dung it, Dr. Z, <laughs> not more manure. All right, Roberta, I like to insert a discussion about scat into everything. And there's a lot of animals that will use poop as a source of camouflage. And I'm talking about your favorite carnival. Oh! 
Oh, I can see by your face that you're surprised and confused at the same time. Well, let's ask the kids at home. Hey kids, do you know how a lion will camouflage itself? Wearing a disguise? They blend in with the grass by changing color? Well, the lion will use scent camouflage. The lion will use elephant poop. See, the lion will roll in some elephant poop to disguise its smell. And that way, when the lion comes up on a zebra, the zebra will think, ooh, there's a big mound of elephant poop coming my way. But it won't know that it's a lion. Oh, wow. That is terrifying and gross and actually pretty clever. I can't believe I just sort of gave lions a compliment. Well, if you thought that's clever, here's a strategy for Phoebe to use in her next game of hide and seek. She can do what the beautiful wood nymph butterfly does. They disguise themselves to look like bird poop. Phoebe says you must be joking. She said you can definitely dump that idea, Dr. Z. Hey, Phoebe, I thought that was a great idea. That definitely wasn't a joke. Well, you might not be joking, Dr. Z, but I'm ready to. I think I've got some great material. What do you call an alligator in a camouflage vest? A private investigator. People tell me I look good in camouflage, but I'm not so sure. I just can't see it. <laughs> you know, we still have to find a good strategy for me and Phoebe. She didn't like my poop suggestion, and I don't have a poop shirt, so we still need to get some suggestions for our strategies. True, very true, Dr. Z. Let's see if we can get any more camouflaging clues from our friend Olivia. Camouflage is one of the most effective and widespread methods of disguise in the animal kingdom. It's perfect for concealing yourself from predators and seamlessly blending into your surroundings. Plenty of animals have employed this method and some have absolutely perfected it. Today, we're visiting a few camouflage experts at Hartley's Crocodile Adventures in Queensland, Australia. This is a tawny frogmouth, a nocturnal species of bird native to Australia. And my goodness, she is well suited to the art of camouflage. Look how well the colour and pattern on her feathers blend into the bark and the moss on the tree. That blend of grey, black and brown allows her to sit right next to the branch, virtually undetected. She's also sitting motionless, which definitely helps when you're trying to mimic a tree. In nature, every advantage helps to increase an animal's chance of survival. Not only does camouflage help you to avoid becoming someone's meal, it can also help you to find your meal. Meet Keith the Chameleon, a resident at Hartley's Crocodile Adventures. We've arrived at a good time. He's about to line up his cricket for lunch. Watch as he carefully moves closer without revealing himself too much. And boom, lunch is served. Chameleons are famous for their ability to blend in. And it's a major advantage when it comes to stalking prey. Just like the tawny frogmouth has evolved feathers to match its surroundings, chameleons have evolved colours on their skin to match the environment they live in. The aim is to become invisible to a predator. Unfortunately for chameleons, they are on the menu for a lot of other animals. They're small, non-venomous, an easy target for predators. So camouflage is their best chance for survival. The next animal I want to show you is an absolute master when it comes to blending in. You have to see it to believe it. Now I'll be impressed if you can find her quickly. I'll give you a hint. She's green. Okay, that was a terrible hint. I'll give you a better one. She's shaped like a leaf. Yep, there she is. I know, incredible, right? She is an Australian leaf insect, which is a type of stick insect, also known as a walking leaf. And you can see why this species got that nickname. She only has a short lifespan, living up to about 18 months. But during that time, she will quietly go about her life, perfectly blending into her environment, swaying with the breeze and going completely undetected. 
There are so many methods of camouflage in the animal kingdom, from concealment like the chameleon, to disguise like the tawny frogmouth, to mimicry like the Australian leaf insect. See if you can head out and find some animals that use camouflage to hide from predators or find their prey. Wow, I'm getting so many great ideas for my camouflage. All right, Roberta, look at me now. I am in my new camouflage using my new strategy. Can you see me now? Unfortunately, yes. I can still see you, Dr. Z. Another nice try, but I'm afraid you still haven't quite nailed the whole camouflage thing yet. All right, Phoebe, did you see anything in that video that you might be able to use? Wait, where's Phoebe? 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 She was here just a minute ago. Hang on, Dr. Z. Our friends at home are telling me they think they know where Phoebe is. Have you guys seen Phoebe? Perhaps you can point her out. Tell us where she's hiding. Phoebe! Is that you? Wow! It looks like Phoebe's found her strategy for the next game of hide and seek. <laughs> yes, she has! What a clever disguise, Phoebe! You certainly took some inspiration from that Australian leaf insect. You know, this reminds me of a really fun craft and activity our friends can do at home, inspired by leaf insects. Today, we're going to be making botanical bugs. Now, everything you can see here in my butterfly is used from materials I found in my backyard, including leaves, we've got flowers, seed pods, and sticks. You'll also need some glue and a pair of scissors in case you want to change the shape of any of the leaves. The hardest part is choosing which leaf you want to begin with. I think probably a nice big leaf for the base of our beetle. And this one here I've already cut in half. This will be our wings. So if you have a look there, imagine a beetle opening its wings. That's what we're going to create. So grab your glue, pop a bit of glue just at the top of the leaf there and place each side of the wings so they're fanning out just a little and hold that in place for a moment while it dries. All right, now the next step is to find a leaf that will be our head. Now, I like to choose a leaf that's a slightly different color to what we've used already. So we've used a fair bit of green and yellow, so maybe something that has a bit of red in it. I think maybe this one. And then cut it just across the bottom there. And what we'll do is stick that little head just on top here. So grab your glue again and place your head on. Now it's time to add the eyes. We're gonna go big and bold today and we're gonna go for the blue eyes. So grab the bottom of it and pull the stem off with your hands. Place two little bits of glue and put our big blue flower eyes on top of the head. I'm glad we chose the blue, that looks excellent. Now it's time to find some antennae and I have the perfect flowers right here. So we're going to stick those just underneath the head and they'll stick out nicely. Those antenna are looking pretty good. Now, how many legs does an insect have? Six, yes. Now that is our next step. Grab six little twigs and we're going to stick them underneath our bug. All right, those legs are stuck on nicely. I think this would have to be my favorite bug so far. Now what you can do with your botanical bugs is hide them in your backyard. And because they're made of sticks, leaves and flowers, they're going to camouflage incredibly well. And see if you can get any friends or family to find your bugs. And the best part is, every time you make one of these, they're gonna look different. So enjoy making your botanical bugs. My identical twin brother has got this camouflage magic trick that he has been wanting to teach me for quite some time. So you and your family might be experts at camouflage, but the team Zoolittle, the identical twins, we are experts at magic. Hi folks, Dr. Zoolittle here. I have a magic trick that has to do with camouflage. Now I am here with... His assistant, Maisie the Magician. Uh, wait, wait, you're a magician? I thought I was doing the magic trick because I'm big and tall and you are five and little. You probably can't do it. 
You'll see. I'll see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Maisie the Magician. Take it away, Maisie. So what I'm going to do is make this corner disappear and then reappear. Wazoo, wazoo, zilabazoo. Make this corner disappear for you. Wait, where did the quarter's gone? All right, make it reappear. Waza wa zoo, zibba zoo zoo, make this quarter reappear for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing magician Maisie. We are now going to explain to you exactly how to do this trick. You're going to need a glue stick. You will need a pair of scissors. You will need a pencil and a separate piece of paper. First thing you're going to do is take the glass and draw a circle around the glass. You are then going to take the scissors and cut that out. Fantastic. Now, we're going to take the glass. You're going to take the glue stick and put a little bit of glue around the rim of the glass. Just a little bit of glue around the rim of the glass. You can actually put a little bit of glue around the rim of the paper as well. And then you're going to stick that piece of paper right on top of the glass so it looks like this. Like glass. Fantastic. And then so, how you do the magic trick is... Do it without the uh, handkerchief, Maisie. Are you ready? So what happens when you take the glass and you put it over the quarter, the quarter disappears. And when you bring it back, it reappears. So that's how you end up with... Ta-da! Ta-da! Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. And Dr. Zulil and Maisie the Magician are out. Bye. Thank you so much, brother. That was an excellent camouflage magic trick. In fact, it switched on a light for me. It gave me a bright idea for my next strategy. I am going to be a lampshade. Well, that's slightly closer, Dr. Z. But I can still see you, and I do think you can do better. Let's think about some of the strategies we've seen already. Some animals hide in plain sight with their friends, like my cousins and I did. Others use their colors to blend into their surroundings, like the coral reef fish. And others even disguise themselves as other objects, like the Australian leaf insect. Or a lampshade, Roberta. I think I'm going to need some more inspiration. In fact, I think it's time for trivia, our animal trickster trivia this week. All right, this is how this week's trivia is going to work. We're going to show you a picture of a camouflaged animal, and you're going to see if you can find the animal and identify it. Oh, that was tricky. Ah, I never saw that. Wow, incredible. Ooh, that was amazing. Those were incredible. Even I could learn a thing or two from those animals about camouflage. I really would love to know more about the last animal, the leaf-tailed gecko. Well, you're in luck because my friend Lita has the scoop on this stealthy species. There's a lot of reptiles in Madagascar, but one of the most fantastic is the leaf-tailed gecko. Here are five things that you should know about the leaf-tailed gecko. Number one, they are all nocturnal and they have vertical pupils. 
Number two, they always sleep with the head down. You see? Number three, look at the tail. Isn't that like a dead leaf? That's why we call it leaf tailed gecko. Number four, actually, can you see it there? He's the master of camouflage. Number five, their hands are textured to stick the trees. Those camouflages were incredible, Roberta. I think we should invite those animals to play hide and seek with us. Oh, I take that back. We'd never find them. The game would never end. But I am about to reveal my strategy for our next game of hide and seek. Ooh, I can't wait to see what you've come up with, Dr. Z. But wait, shouldn't this be a secret? Not this one, Roberta. This one is high technology. I will be undetectable. I have created an incognito invention of the ultimate disguise. Behold! Um, I, I don't think I understand, Dr. Z. That looks like an ordinary shirt. Wait, watch, and be prepared to be amazed. Roberta, this is no ordinary fabric. And you might think I'm disguised as a tree, a weeping willow, or a pine. But no, this is high technology. Well, I think it's safe to say that I won the camouflage challenge. Okay, well, there's only one way to settle this. We're all going to hide at the same time and let's see who can find us. Are you ready, kids? You have 10 seconds on the clock. It's safe to say it was a tie. That was so much fun. We all used different strategies to blend in. Hey, friends, what was your favorite animal or camouflage strategy you saw? Oh, a lot of you like the stick insect and Roberta's dazzle of zebras. Well, what strategies are you going to use on your next game of hide and seek? Will you blend in with your background? Will you disguise yourself as somebody else, or perhaps you'll create a dazzle of friends. But before you use the stinky poop camouflage of the lion, make sure you get your parents' permission first. Oh, and remember at the beginning of the show, I told you about all the different things that we were gonna hide. Well, if you didn't find them all, watch this. today. If you had fun, I hope you'll join us on our next adventure. Tell your friends to join us as well and keep the good jokes coming. Ask your grown-ups to email your suggestions, questions, poems, stories, and jokes to Roberta and I at zmail at sandiegozoo.org. It is easy to remember. Z stands for Zebra and Zoo Little. I'm so excited you all joined us for today's episode, and I am looking forward to our next visit, where we can do more exploring and wondering about nature. Keep asking those questions. See you soon. Stay, Stay curious, curious, my friends. friends.